Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the north, Tim from the south, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil Gore. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our March 2021 disc memberment. This is the Civil Gore Podcast, and I am your host, Tim. And this is Brian. And we actually, this one's not too bad, um, I have to say, for the month. Uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a five-week month, but it's, it, it's actually not too bad. I mean, the first week is, like, it's front-loaded, I think, though, don't you think, with its one release? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what <laughs> happened here, and there's a reason there's only one release. Technically, there are more releases, but they are all releases that were pushed back from oh, February right. or January. Uh, I think... I want to say it was possibly Severin had several titles that were pushed. Uh, so I think that was due to, um, I don't know if it was due to the weather. There was some there was some reason they, they had a big push of a lot of their titles. And I didn't mm-hmm. want to go through them again because we've already covered them in the previous disc yeah. government. So the first week of March, you'll actually see a lot of titles we talked about last month coming out. I think Cthulhu Mansion was one of them. Um, oh, right. Several yeah. others. So. Uh, Queens of Evil was another one that got pushed. So if you guys are kind of wondering why there's only one release this first week in March, that's the uh, that's the reason why. So maybe uh, they could use their severance pay, for, yeah, uh, yeah, to purchase. So uh, let's get right into it. A pretty short month, uh, and the first week is going to be super short. This yeah. is our disc memberment for March 2021, and we're starting things off with March 2nd. Brian, I'm gonna let you take this one. I'm gonna let you kick it off. <laughs> <laughs> and it's our pick of the week. Yeah, it is our pick this of was the week. a challenging week to pick. Uh, no, obviously, because we only, like we said, we only had the one title uh, because the other ones were repeats. But uh, this is one that it probably would have been my pick of the week anyway. I've already ordered it. Uh, it was one that uh, uh, Tim and I uh, both uh, loved. I think we got a screener for this, so we saw this kind of a we little did. early, right? Yeah, we saw this early. Yeah, yeah, and this was uh, from RLJ Entertainment, which we've we've surmised as pretty much releases all the Shutter. Yep. Uh, movies there and that's scare me uh from of course 2020 um during a power outage two strangers tell scary stories the more fred and fanny commit to their tales the more stories come to life in their catskills cabin i didn't realize it was in the catskills actually but i like that they specified it in this <laughs> <laughs> uh the horrors of reality manifest when fred confronts his ultimate fear and this one is like a really like unique take on the anthology format it's really it really, that's what it boils down to being, but it's really – it's done in a, in a very unique way and just a just a great script. I, and, you know, and he uh, – Josh Rubin sold those scripts actually. Um, he, uh, I guess – or not sold them. I'm sorry. He was giving them away or something. You had to like uh, do some of that because I think Jeff Whitmire got one of them. I forgot. Well, we'll have to ask him what they did. Um, I forgot how they did that. Oh, but, cool. um Yeah. Well, I thought it was, uh, you know, I saw mixed reviews sometimes. Uh, some people just didn't like it at all because it was so different. But I kind of, I thought it was just a really bold way to make a movie. Uh, it was really a unique premise. It really highly depended on the performances of the two lead actors to pull it off. Yeah. Which I thought they did wonderfully. So I just thought, you know, I kind of liked the movie just for the, the boldness it took in doing something completely different with an anthology format, which I thought was super cool as much as I like anthologies as you do too. Uh, it was neat to see something different. Yeah. And, and this one for one of those shutter releases actually has some nice uh, features on it. It's got a uh, director and cinematographer commentary, which is interesting. Cause you know, you wouldn't really focus on the cinematography of this type, the way this movie uh, uh, ends up being, but but I guess you know there. I guess you you know you have to set these shot because a lot of it's done in like with a lot of dialogue base. So I guess that that'd be an interesting commentary actually just to to listen to along you know with uh, you know Josh Rubin in there. Um, it's got interviews with the cast, behind the scenes photo gallery, make cool shit podcast. Is that our podcast? Why is our podcast again snubbed? <laughs> but uh, this is make cool shit podcast episode one. Scare me. I see that's what the key was. See, they started and used Scare Me as their first episode and it brought go, the attention. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, what this podcast is, but yeah. Uh, and they have outtakes and feel the music, feel the light music video. 
So that's a nice little disc there. And the best part about it is that usually those shutter releases are usually around like between $12 and $15. Yeah. So you're getting a really good disc, I think. So I, I had already pre-ordered it because um, I definitely want that in my uh, on the monolith there because that's a, uh, a great uh, title from last year that we liked. So yeah. I guess in review of the week, Tim, uh, we just repeat exactly what we said over again. Yeah, it's scary. We just want to play it over again. <laughs> <laughs> just Yeah, just rewind it three or four minutes and uh listen to it again yeah so march 2nd that's it for uh for the releases this week scare me like i said you will find some of those other pushed releases in this week so if uh you didn't hear us talk about them you may be seeing them on the shelves regardless yes it's not us that forgot to mention them that's no, what, that's no. what we're trying to say <laughs> all right so bringing us up to the second week of march march 9th we have a few more releases but not many uh, first one up is from Code Red, and this is called The Forest from 1982. A cannibal hermit, which are always the worst kind of hermit. Yeah, yeah, that's the two, the combo of the two are just never a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Living in the woods, preys on campers and hikers for his food supply. And man, I really love this trailer. It had some creepy crap bag kids, as Kim yeah. and Ken would say. It has some just completely random editing, which I really loved. It, it seems to be a lot of men in pain and women getting stabbed. Yeah, and I swear, I there was a one sequence in there. It looked like it was an exact ripoff of the of the opening of Friday the Thirteenth, uh, with uh, Annie the cook running through the woods and then getting her throat slit. I was like, wait a minute, that is a direct. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll say, give it. We'll we'll be political, uh, politically correct here and say it was an homage. Brian, to Friday the 13th. are you are you implying that there were early slasher films of the 1980s that mimicked friday the 13th i might be i'm clutching my pearls over here yeah i was afraid to kind of go good to you know kind of jump in full both feet there with that one but i think i might be and there's even like it's funny they even like have a nod to friday the 13th part two uh with the with the upside down kill there oh yeah but um but either way yeah it looks kind of cool looks like a cool movie it does look cool i wanted to see it uh it does have some good extras too it's got an audio commentary by producer director don jones and star gary kent who played michael brody Audio commentary by producer director Don Jones and cinematographer Stuart Asbjornson. <laughs> wow, you said that really good. Yeah. Uh, I've been practicing my Swedish. <laughs> yeah, because that one was like dead on. I was like, when I saw that in our rundown, like when we were going through it, I'm like, I can't wait till Tim stumbles on this. <laughs> but you've proved me wrong, Tim. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get better with these uh, name pronunciations. Uh, making a featurette, theatrical trailer, and a limited edition slipcase. Uh, the next one is um, it's by Warner Brothers. That's weird. I feel like they don't release anything anymore unless it's that, like, Warner Direct yeah, title. Yeah, yeah. But um, anyway, and we, we start – the first one they do uh, – second one uh, – one of ones is Pick of the Week, so we'll get to that one later. But this one is Isle of the Dead from 1945. It says, on a lonely Greek island – I guess – is that desperate? supposed to be desperate? No, desperate. Or is it – it is desperate? Yeah, it is well, desperate, what, what, yeah. What does that mean? Actually, like, like they're I... different, uh, like a variety. Like it's a variety pack of people. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. So a variety group of yeah, people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a just a group, of, group people? of people? Okay. Yeah. yeah. A disparate Unless group they were clones in which they would all be identical. That's true. Uh, you're right. So I guess I'm glad they, they, they uh, wrote that, that they are a disparate group of people. Are in fear because plague has come to the island, making them virtual prisoners. And then there is talk of the Vorvolik. Oh, no, the Vorvolakis. A vampire-like creature that preys on the living. <laughs> That's a cool name, though. Vorvalakis. Vorvalakis. Although it sounds like something I ordered once. I don't know. It's a, it's, you know but uh, anyway, uh, among those trapped there is General Nicholas Faridis, Boris Karloff. It says, nicknamed the Watchdog, who is taken aback when he visits his wife's mausoleum only to find her grave empty. As several of those quarantined die from the plague, paranoia sets in creating a tense, fear-filled atmosphere. Yeah, this one, uh, I, this looks like uh, Boris Karloff with a perm, which was interesting. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the most frightening part of the movie is the hair, I think, <laughs> that we saw. And uh, this one, uh, it's got the 4K restoration of the film from the origi original nitrate camera negative. So, yeah. That's, the original negative. Yeah, they're, they're really getting creative. And this one is our first film historian of the week. It's one of our old favorites, oh, Steve Haberman. Oh, man, he is Haberman. just killing it. He is. He's on everything. And, we, of course, we know him, um, you know, because he comes in and he sings Haberman, Haberman, does whatever a Haber can. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, and, and like we've said, for those who have not known, while it sounds ridiculous, he always offers incredible input as if he was had heightened senses. 
and he does counteract uh, Constantine Nazar when they were uh, together. Or Nazar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nazar lips, yeah. Yeah, uh, Nazar lips. That's it. <laughs> and also an original theatrical trailer with Spanish subtitles, which is yes. not, to, not to be outdone. All right, yeah. so that brings us to our pick of the week. Uh, this was a unanimous decision, and the reason I picked this one is because whereas The Forest was, looked like kind of a Friday the 13th clone, and I looked at the IMDb review, review rating, and it wasn't very high. And then Isle of the Dead, while it looks interesting, and it has Boris Karloff, it's from 1945, and this one to me just looked more interesting. It's from 1978, and it's called The Bermuda Depths, and it's from Warner Brothers again. And I will read the uh, synopsis. What secret lurks 20,000 feet below the waves in the paranormal realm called the Bermuda Triangle? That's the question a scientist, Burl Ives, his <laughs> student, Carl Weathers, and a young man, Lee McCloskey, haunted by nightmarish memories of his Bermuda childhood, ask themselves. The answer involves a beauty, Connie Selica, who has sold her soul for eternal youth and a giant sea turtle that leaves death in its wake. Eerie and hypnotic, The Bermuda Depths was produced by Arthur Rankin Jr. and Jules Bass. <laughs> uh, that, that explains Burl Ives' connection to this. Because remember, he was a snowman in How Rudolph. could I not pick this for pick of the week? You have to. Who meld their imaginative fantasy style with the live action horror genre. This is the most off the wall thing I've ever heard of. Yeah, the only thing I, I think would have been made is better if Burl Ives, like, actually appeared as his, like, Santa uh, Snowman character. Oh, like, my from, gosh. From, the, from those, like, Rankin and, Rankin and Bass, like, uh, it's the series. Can you imagine just in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle, <laughs> you just see a Burl Ives snowman walking up, you know? The Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> and he just starts singing. I would love that. I know. Oh, come on. They, they need to put that as a special feature. Is it too late to, to <laughs> add to this before they release it? I will write and sing the song. Just put me on the DVD. I will do anything. Yeah. I'm desperate. At yeah, this do point. a special edition next week, Warner. And then. <laughs> um, this one, I, I could not find an official trailer. There were clips and stuff. So I just linked to a random clip of this song they sing called Jenny's Song, um, played by a very young Connie Selica, who is yes. married to John Tesh. I did not know that. Yes, and I actually found I I have a little a, conne- a connection there, a little six degrees of separ- separation to Connie Selka. So my stepdad's uh, one of his best friends through college actually uh, married Connie Selka's cousin, and at their wedding was Connie Selka and John Tesh. And I actually and I once uh, went over there and I, uh, I swam in their pool, not <laughs> Connie Selka and John Tesh's pool, but uh, my my stepdad's friend. So your claim to fame is you swam in Connie Selka's cousin's pool. Yes, That's I, that fantastic. that gives. I don't know how that gives me. See, in aquatic terms, I think it bumps it up uh, an extra degree of separation. It brings it a little closer because because yeah. she's swimming in this and I swam in a pool. So I think there's, there's like that weird connection that the double negative crosses each other, the aquatic thing out. So I'm like, I guess I'm like four degrees separation from Connie Selica. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Well. Yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me the a, a cool mashup costume would not be Tom Selica. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the coolest that like mashup? Yeah, that would... like you know, it's like Magnum PI, but like as Connie Selica <laughs> dressed as Magnum PI. Problem you know? is, anybody under forty would have no clue what you were going at. Yeah, well, we we never th- we never really uh, made this podcast for anyone but ourselves. That's true. Right? That's true. <laughs> yeah. We really apologize <laughs> to all our young viewer, young listeners yeah. out there who have no clue what any of our references are. Yeah. But Connie Selica is timeless. She, you know, is uh, you gotta know Connie Selica. Yeah, she, was... she, she, yeah, she looks incredible in this movie. Yeah, um, she really does. It's like, doesn't I like I, I and like you know you don't. It's weird because I don't think she has she done any other kind of uh, even like heart adjacent titles. I don't remember her being in anything I, like that. No, I don't. I don't. Um, this one does have a new 4K restoration of the film, includes both the 133 U.S. broadcast television version and the 185 international theatrical version, and a new audio commentary by author, film historian Amanda Rees, or Rise or Rays, we have no idea. Are You in the House Alone? A TV movie compendium, 1964-1999, and Kinder Trauma co-founder Lance Vaughn. Yeah. Well, we we've uh, we've met. Uh, well, not met. When I say met, I meant we've made up in a completely fictional biography for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. She she's uh, known for her amazing, rare, and rarely known facts about obscure movies. For example, she knows everything Dennis Christopher ate for lunch during his shoots. 
Because I remember it was on the Fade to Black disc. That's how I got, I got with that one. <laughs> and uh, one time, her and Bill Ackerman did not know they were recording the commentary together and each tried to send each other out for Earl Grey tea, steeped for no less than four minutes, leading to a very awkward first meeting. Thought I'd just add that little bonus in there. Yes. Oh, and so. special thanks to Cody who sent us another update of our film historians yes. this week. It was great. And she updated, uh, thank God, Sam Deegan, so we won't make that mistake again. Yeah. Sam with two M's. Yeah. She'll, she'll forever now be known as her, her proper gender, and I apologize. <laughs> All right. So to recap, March 9th, we only had three titles. The Forest from 1982, Isle of the Dead from 1945, and our pick of the week, The Bermuda Depths from 1978. Yes. Moving right along to March 16th. Now, this is where we finally get into a, a fairly big release week. Yeah. And the first one up, while it was not listed as strictly horror, it was kind of listed as fantasy thriller. I had to put it on here because there was so much buzz about this movie, Brian. And yeah, I cannot wait to like see it. Uh, crazy buzz. Yeah. This one is Psycho Goreman from 2020. After unearthing a gem that controls an evil monster looking to destroy the universe, a young girl and her brother use it to make him do their bidding. And hopefully you've gone and seen this trailer because it's absolutely wonderful. I definitely want to watch this one. I've heard nothing but good things. Everybody I've read on my horror forums or anything that has seen this movie have really loved it. So uh, this one is definitely on my must-see list. Yes, same same with me. I've heard nothing but good things. Uh, This one has a great special features list. It has a director commentary one-on-one interview with the director of P, uh, PG, Psycho Gorman, interviews with the cast, interview with Adam Brooks, Cortex, a conversation, the music of PG, fight choreography, fight pre filming the paladin fight, PG versus Pandora, miniature magic, inside the creature shop, concept art gallery, trading cards gallery, and behind-the-scenes photo gallery. So that one's just packed with featurettes. I love it. Yeah, and I also saw that there was a, a special, like, limited edition version of this. Um, I think it's got all these features, but it comes with, like, um, actual physical trading cards and a couple of, uh, I think, some some kind of, like, a little, you know, swag with it. Cool. So, but yeah. I didn't want to, you know, I'm like, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to order that one because it was like $50 or something. And I'm like, I didn't see this yet. I kind of want to see it first. I could see what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy it, this one, and then wish I bought the other one because I'm going to like this so much. Yeah. But um, but I, I'll take my chances, I guess. So. <laughs> um, the next one, uh, it's an era release. And, uh, and actually, you know what? I'm going to go on a little side tangent here quick. I know we don't usually do this on, um, on, uh, the dismemberment, we kind of stick with the dismemberment, but I did see some, it was a Twitter uh, conversation that someone tweeted out, they said something about, should I still keep Shutter because I have Arrow? And the best comment I saw was Jeff Whitmire's, he goes, you wound me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I'm like, most people were like, you know, of course you got to keep Shutter. But then I actually saw some ones raving about the Arrow service. Now you and I tried the Arrow service and nothing against it. But I, 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 to me, it's like, as great as our service was, it's like, I mean, to, to have it either or over Shudder, I don't know. I have to pick Shudder. I mean, it's not even, yeah. for me, it's not even well, a question. Because yeah, you got so much original content on Shudder. You got Joe Bob. Yeah. I mean, I can't give that stuff up. Now, as a compliment to Shudder, I think Arrow's fantastic. Um, right. There was just not enough on there for me to justify it at the time. That's not to say I won't go back to it at some point and, and right. maybe resub uh, as they get more content. But there was some cool stuff on there. Now, don't get me wrong. I watched a few things when I had my trial. Oh, yeah. No, no. Same same here. I watched a few things. I, I think I kept it for like a month. or I think I kept it for one extra month um, after the free trial ended. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I said, I was like I just wasn't – watching it enough and there's so many things out there and then then i think what really cemented it too was then i bought that i bought the full moon year thing that you did as yeah, well to get that yeah. bonus so i'm like you know what i'm just and full moon has got five thousand titles on i'm like i'm never gonna catch up if i if i have too many of these streaming services and most of the stuff from arrow that i i really really want i buy on the disc anyway right so but anyway, I'm sorry to go off on the tangent. I was just, it was a funny, it was an interesting conversation to see, but, um, you know, especially because, I mean, to me, it's like Shudder is such a necessity. There's, if there's one streaming service, I don't think I could ever give up at Shudder, but anyway, let's move on. Either way, not to disparage Arrow before we announce one of its releases, but, because <laughs> we do love Arrow. Uh, this one is The Invisible Man Appears and The Invisible Man versus a Human Fly. 
So I guess you got a trailer for just the first one, right? That was what that link was? Yeah, I did not have a trailer for the second one, but I figured we could get enough from the first trailer to kind of understand what these were. And I will tell you. Yeah, I got enough. When I first saw this, (laughs) I was like, did I miss something? Like, did Universal release Invisible Man films I didn't know about? I thought the same thing. Yeah. I thought the exact same thing. I'm like, wait, this isn't Universal. (laughs) This isn't a classic, the Universal classic monsters. Um, Now, visually, if you look at it right away, I mean, they have this kind of the same Invisible Man, like, uh, you know, costume. But this is definitely not a Universal release. Uh, Anyway, uh, and it's kind of like they kind of made like a, another plot to it and like just use the Invisible Man as you'll hear this one. So it says, Jewel Thieves become interested in an invisibility formula invented by Professor Naz- Nakazo- Nakazato and want to use this invention to acquire a diamond necklace called the Tears of Amor. A ruthless serial killer. Oh, this must be the second one. Uh, the second uh, movie is a ruthless serial killer with a peculiar method of stalking and killing his victims comes face to face with a police officer turned invisible by a scientific experiment. Who will emerge triumphant? So is it like two different invisible men? Yeah. Like from each movie? I, yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't, yeah, I don't get these <laughs> at all. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. But it's uh, kind of interesting, I mean, to see a Japanese take on uh, an American monster. It's kind of a unique yeah. thing. I, I, I like that. I, I think it's pretty cool. I wonder if they did others, like they, they did other the Universal Monsters. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know enough about Japanese. I mean, like, I doubt they do Creature Japanese because movie. they have Godzilla, technically. You know, they already have the aquatic horror yeah. nailed down. So I don't think they'd redo it with, a, with like, the Creature. But Now, one thing I, I loved about this trailer is the, the trailer starts off, like, really bragging about these special effects that you're getting ready to see and mm-hmm. how they, like, spent years perfecting these special effects. And then they proceed to show case these effects that were worse than the ones in the original 1930s invisible man movies wow yeah and the best is they say they say special effects made through the magic of camera yeah yeah it's uh Uh, i knew i will i will say i was really blown away when i saw the uh, first invisible man film for the first time in years and years and years how good those effects still hold up there's some really yeah astonishing effects in there for a 1930s film uh, not so much in these this trailer, at least. <laughs> yeah, I mean the 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 Invisible Man bandage sequence that, that that's in all of these. Uh, that one was well done. I mean, that one seems like it was the same effect. But there were some ones with like a floating gun that you could totally tell had like was on a stick. Yeah, they had like a book that was on totally on a string. Um, yeah, and you could see. I mean, it was like so blocky. Now it may have been the print of it too. Yeah. Probably took some of it away by now, but who knows? But um, but I mean they they. But then again, now that I say that, the the feature contradicts me. It says high definition 1080p transfers of both <laughs> films on one Blu-ray. So I guess it's just not the film. It says original lossless uh, Japanese model audio on both films, optional English subtitles for both films, transparent terrors. A newly filmed interview with critic and John. Oh, we didn't. Oh, well, it's Kim Newman. Okay, so we we, we know. Yeah, Kim Newman's grandfather. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, can uh, the history of the Invisible Man in cinema theatrical trailer for the Invisible Man appears image galleries for both I, films. That's funny, image galleries when it's an Invisible Man, <laughs> just blank, <laughs> blank pictures. Uh, uh, reversible sleeve featuring new and original artwork by Graham Humphreys. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and the first pressing only illustrated collector's booklet featuring new writing by Keith Allison, Haley Scanlon, and Tom Vincent. And while we were doing this, when I was actually, uh, I just popped over to the Aero streaming service because I wanted to see what was new. And I will and they give have this. No, but I'll give one more point yeah. for them. They do have some of their box sets on the streaming service. So like uh, that, okay. um, the Gamera box set that had all the, the complete collection of Gamera films, that's on there. Mm. They have their, um, that, what was that? It came from the Swamp box set. Remember what I'm talking about? It was that, that movie... Oh gosh, let me see if I can find it. Um, the films of William Greff, Greff, Greffe, I think his name, uh, how you pronounce his name, but he had a whole box set they came out with, and they've got all those movies streaming on here, and they've got some with commentaries. So another point in Arrow's favor, I, I would again not see it as a replacement for Shutter, but a great compliment to it because that's got some cool stuff on there, especially if you if you're like me and can't afford their box sets. <laughs> Yeah, well, they, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, there is that one, um, the, I think you could buy a year of it for, like, 50, 
like a one shot. Mm-hmm. So maybe I don't know. Maybe you do that at yeah, some point because I think be it's one. a, you know, I mean, if you're gonna get these streaming servers, if you can get a deal on it somehow, because I think it was like what six or was it five dollars a month? And well, no, that doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, no, five dollars a month. Or and fifty bucks do, for the year. Or yeah. fifty bucks, you save. Yeah, you save about ten bucks. So, yeah. okay. All right. So next up, we have one of our favorites. Uh, RLJ Entertainment presents Castle Freak from 2020. Uh, terror strikes when a blind woman and her friends travel to a mysterious Albanian castle that harbors dark secrets. Of course, starring our good friend Emily Sweet. Uh, already pre-ordered, uh, both of yep. us. I- so. This one's on the way, um, and no special I mean, features. a great deal, too. It's it's yeah. a good price. I think it's like 12 bucks. Yeah, it's only like 12 bucks. I don't think it has any special features that I could see, uh, at least according to the Amazon page, but, um, but still, great price for that movie. Yeah, and, you know, of course we love to uh, support our friend, and especially we were going to support our good friend Emily Sweet. And but I happen, but we happen to really love this version of this reimagining of Castle Freak anyway, so... Next one is uh, another one we loved, uh, we most recently discussed, and that's Don't Tell a Soul. Um, that was one we had, we actually uh, got to talk to uh, the director on as well. And so it's two thieving teenage brothers stealing money to help their sick mom match wits with a troubled security guard stuck at the bottom of a forgotten well. Of course, we, we nicknamed this one American Shrewdy. <laughs> and, and remember, you can't beat this one, Tim. <laughs> that's right. But uh, – and it's uh, so far there's only one, really two features, I guess. But flesh and blood creating don't tell a soul featurette. But I actually want to really see that because we heard such great stories from right. from the production of that. Yeah. So I'm actually really curious to watch that one. And then there's an audio which is Dol- Dolby Atmos track. Nice. So I guess that's some kind of special new audio. Yeah, Dolby Atmos is the like the latest Dolby uh, protocol or whatever. And if you if you want to get really crazy, you can do overhead speakers and all kinds of fun stuff with that one. Oh, so, oh, so it's like Atmos, like yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. yeah, or you yeah. could like I guess you could put them in the floor and pretend you're in the pit with Dwight Schrute. Oh, um, now there you yeah. go. But now, but now since we we decided we really don't want to know what he smells like, hopefully there's not like a, a scent <laughs> yeah. feature in the Dolby Atmos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, next up we have uh, Tower of Evil, 1972. This one's coming at us from Scorpion Releasing. A group of experienced archaeologists are searching for an old and mystic Phoenician treasure when they are surprised by a series of mysterious murders. And I love this trailer because it reminded me of the narrator from the Haunted Mansion. He, and I know exactly which part reminded you of it. Yeah, too. Well, take it away if you got, if you if you've memorized because I can't remember the actual line. Well, I don't remember the exact. Line. It was just like it was like there's no only one way in, <laughs> yes. but no way out. Exactly. And of course, it's yeah. like there are no windows and no doors. doors. So we offer you this chilling challenge <laughs> to find a way out. <laughs> yeah. And there's always my way. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. I, mean, I want to see this trailer so bad because it looks like uh, this is um this is all we we must mention this is AKA the I what is the curse of Snape Island or something like that horror yeah, on Snape Island. I, I, I mean, is it is there like a Harry Potter crossover? We're not <laughs> we're not known like well before it's time. Like maybe that's where like J.K. Rowling's got her got Snape's name from. It looks like know. a good old fashioned uh, Scooby Doo mystery almost in a way. It doesn't look like two different movies at one point. Like the trailer, like all of a sudden cuts to like I feel like they filmed it like twelve years later or something. It's like, and there's like this weird poor man's Ashton Kutcher in it wearing a weird butterfly shirt. I don't. It's very odd. Yeah. Um. That I. But I want to see it though. It looks like a really fun movie. Oh shoot! And I missed a film historian here too. But it's one we know. Yeah, we know. We know this film historian. So this one's previously yeah. restored from an inner positive. Audio commentary with producer Richard Gordon, moderated by film historian Tom Weaver. Tom Weaver, everybody. Yes, that's your cue, I Brian. Have, that's your cue. I know, and I'm like, because I forgot to put him in there, I gotta like look him up the, the on Cody's spreadsheet rather than put him in like I normally do. And but she did give us a nice. Uh, it's in his alphabetical order, so it's great. Where Tom is the upbeat, nice guy. He likes to hang out at the beach and goes to the Regal Beagle. <laughs> he once invited three random guys he met at the beach to join him on a commentary. Those guys are Phil Sunburn Benson, Marty Martin, and John Voight, the chiropractor, not the actor or dentist. <laughs> Does anybody find these amusing, or is it just us? I don't know. I hope so. I mean, 
They're so And you know, ridiculous. I think you guys should at least appreciate them because Cody does such a hard work at transcribing our zaniness yeah. every week. And, every and month, I think sometimes month. we just make them ridiculous to see to see how Cody will translate them. Yes, into... and she does it so well, we cannot stump her. It's impossible. <laughs> she transcribes it perfectly every time. Uh, no matter how in depth we make the story, literally I think short of writing an 800 page biography of these people, would we ever get her to like <laughs> get her off her game? But yes, we tell her all the time. We appreciate her and and she is the best. Uh I swear, like without her, I have a feeling we'd be re- like these people would be changing over time every couple of Or we would have just dropped the whole thing altogether, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would have just lost the bit completely. So Cody, you are the uh the lifeblood of the film historian <laughs> joke. So <laughs> so you're either gonna be loved or hated right now <laughs> exactly, by the, rec- yeah. the the other listeners. Uh, this also has interviews with actress Soretta Wilson, composer Kenneth V. Jones, and editor Henry Richardson. Watch in Katarina's Nightmare Theater mode with our hostess, Katarina Lay Waters. I still want to see what that is. I hear that yeah. all the time, the Katarina Nightmare Theater mode. That's interesting. I know. What does that mean? And it's mode. It's a mode. It's a mode. So is it like an Elvira? I don't know. Where she like comes out? I don't know. Possibly. Now we got to buy this disc just for that. I know. <laughs> uh, theatrical trailer and reversible horror on Snape Island art. Nice. Okay, the next one is this is a good one. This is from Troma. It's <laughs> Dolly Deadly from 2016, and it says the story of Dolly Deadly revolves around the warped psychology of a tormented young boy who can only relate to his doll collection, and the only relief from the pain in his life comes with slaughtering those who he has learned to hate the most. Everyone in this trailer park. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, this one, Brian, I was like, you can tell it's a super low budget movie. But the yeah. trailer was surprisingly effective. I thought they did a bang up job. Like whoever is this editor that edited this trailer together, give them a raise because they turned this low budget movie into something I actually kind of want to see. Yeah, but like if the movie itself, it looks like it's Rob Zombie's "Here Comes Honey Boo Boo," <laughs> is what I you know. It's like that's what I think it is. If like he directed an episode of that show, this is what you would get. But uh, yeah. Oh, and you get the next one. You get a doozy. Oh wow. Okay, so this is a double feature. <laughs> Oh my god! I don't even think I realized it was a duddy because I don't think I saw the trailer to the the second one. Yeah, there was no trailer for the second one. Again, like sort of like uh, the Invisible Man. So this one's coming at us from Dark Side releasing. It's a double feature, and I have no idea what these movies have to do with each other. The first one is <laughs> <laughs> the first one is Blitzkrieg: Escape from Stalag sixty nine, and the second one is The Bloody Ape from two thousand eight, and. Why is it so, like, later, too? It's, like, 11 years later. What the... So, if any of you listen to Coaster Radio, there's a character named Tibor, Dutch performing artist. And that's yeah. what who sounds like, who does the uh, narration for this trailer. Who hey, Remember, you weren't there, but I did a sketch with Tibor uh, on a stage at, at Silver Dollar City theme park. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this one. There's a video of it. I have it. So, I can send you the video at some point. It's, yeah, I do. I play uh, Yakov Shmirnov, and I decide to open up... Uh, Reopen up my um, – well, Tibor tries to open up his uh, dinner theater in – that's that's the way the sketch goes. He tries to open a dinner theater in Branson. But, of course, Yakov Shmirnov already had one, so I come back and we have a little feud. And the icy princess comes and – Oh, my god. It was gosh. supposed to be Dolly Parton, but it was going to be Dolly Parton. But uh, <laughs> the little behind the scenes, Silver Dollar City was a little nervous, I guess, about <laughs> allowing that joke. Because, of course, Dolly Parton's uh, – com- uh, parent company of Dollywood yeah. also owns Silver Dollar City and Dolly has some presence there in Branson as well so we didn't want to uh, do that so we changed it to the Icy Princess who came and remember that was the summer of Icy so it was a whole thing And but it was really kind of fun so we got uh, we included like in, the whole uh, episode included a lot of crazy stuff even like some uh, uh, a, a member of the Joint Chiefs appeared on stage uh, and Tom uh, from Louisville, also known as Bob the Lobster, appeared on stage. As Tom from Louisville, no, not Bob the Lobster. And uh, it was a great little sketch. I got to get you a copy of that, Tim, because it'll nice, be enjoyable. Yeah. But anyway, let's go back. <laughs> so anyway, that's Tibor, yeah, so, of course, so done by the I'll great have to EB. Narrate this in my best Tibor voice. So, uh, yeah. for, with all apologies to EB, enter Stalag sixty nine, where torture is just beginning for this bloody band of Nazi butchers. Germany, 1945, Stalag 69, POW camp ruled by the sadistic SS commandant Helmut Schultz is nothing but a blood-soaked playground for this perverse Nazi monster who uses his American, Russian, and British prisoners in cruel and ghastly biochemical weapons experiments. 
when a group of young wanton USO girls are captured and fall into the hands of Schultz and his battalion of butchers. The brutality is turned up and the unsuspecting girls are gorged, gouged, and ground up, all for the pleasure of Schultz and his SS brothers and sisters. Now it's up to ragtag survivors of the camp to strike back against their captors and escape from Stalag 69 alive or on a slab. My God, I think that's more than Tibor spoke in his entire history. I, that's why I was losing it. That was... Halfway through, I was like, Tibor's never spoke this much. I can't do it. I know. We need to send that to... Uh, we need to send this trailer to EB. Just to do it. You have to do it justice. He, he, he needs to see... Well, he needs to see it, too, that he's been ripped off. <laughs> uh, this one I have to do in a Carnival Barker voice, because if yeah. you remember the old county fairs, there used to be the woman that turned into a gorilla. Do you remember this, Brian? Kind of. Okay, yeah. so, so county fairs, they used to be the sideshows. This is way back when they could actually do sideshows. And they used to have this uh, this tent. I always wanted to see it because it was a woman that turns into a gorilla. And Kevin Kevin tells a funny story about going to see this thing one time. I don't think I ever actually went inside one. But apparently <laughs> they use a projection. Like they would literally project uh, the gorilla film on top of a woman in a cage. And then uh, what would happen is you got this whole tent full of people they would project it like she's turning into the gorilla and then they would swap it out for a guy in a gorilla suit. And then they would, there'd be a loud bang and the cage would open and then the gorilla would chase everybody out of the tent. That's how the thing. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. But the uh, carnival barker, I'll never forget this part. Cause he used to go, gorilla, 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 go back 10,000 years. <laughs> so I used to love that. Um, uh, he, yeah, he used to, the, the carnival barker for the gorilla woman was just, was just the best so uh this was called the bloody ape the bloody ape is the most outrageous drive-in movie take on pose murders in the rue morgue ever committed to film a carnival barker foolishly releases his 400 pound gorilla 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 who then literally goes bananas <laughs> on a rampage of raw rape and buffo butchery leaving the low rent population of long island either sexually violated slaughtered or wait wait <laughs> long island that's you brian that gorilla's coming after i know you. damn from Maverick indie filmmaker Keith J. Crocker, Blitzkrieg escaped from Stalag 69. Well, there's our there's our tie-in. There he is. He, there you go. The bloody... It's a Crocker two-pack. <laughs> the... It's a box of Crockers. <laughs> this is an animal Crocker. Uh, yeah. The... Oh, God. <laughs> I just walked right into that one. Okay. The Bloody Ape is a gore-soaked love letter to the sex and violence of the Grindhouse movie era that pulls no punches and offers no apologies for wallowing in a skin-drenched stew of crudeness and camp folks. Banned from numerous festivals around the world, ignored by critics and loathed by the politically correct, but now there is just no stopping the Bloody Ape. Go back 10,000 years, ladies and gentlemen, 10,000 years, you'll never find any Anything as terrifying as the go 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 gorilla, the bloody ape. Or ten minutes into this segment, <laughs> you'll never find it either. <laughs> oh, uh, I have no idea what these movies are about. I will say the Blitzkrieg trailer was pretty. Uh, it was almost unwatchable. It was the film quality was so bad. I have, I just have no idea. I saw boobs. I saw torture. I saw Nazis. Yeah, that was. Uh, it was pretty. Uh, pretty graphic. I have to say for a trailer. Yeah. 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 So, so Brian gets the, the 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 pleasure of reading off probably the biggest uh, pick of the week extras. Uh, this is a huge, huge. Oh my pick god! Of the week. I didn't realize we're there already. Yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm stretching my jaw because this might be a while here. Yeah. I'm gonna get prepped here. This is the Dungeon of Andy Milligan. It's by Severin Films. It's our pick of the weeks uh, because when you hear that, it's just the the amount of of stuff on this disc and it's it says it's from 1965 to 1984 so i assume it's this guy's whole career here yeah it's like 15 films and it's not cheap it's about 140 bucks but it's such a big set yeah and I, what's with the pronoun uh or pro or adverb i don't know i'm not good i always get mixed those uh, i mean i know what the definitions are but i always use them incorrectly in the wrong spot but uh it was seven films with the sh with ghastly because wasn't it ghastly death of al adamson or something too yeah. by seven films yeah yeah so anyway this is uh but oh i guess this is the film so i guess that's not really on seven but anyway disc one the Ghastly Ones. It says, a brand new master of the film struck from a 35 millimeter release print. Audio commentary with actor Hal Borsk <laughs> and filmmaker Frank Henenlotter. Or Henenlotter. Okay, there we go. 
Uh, then it's got audio commentary with Cinefears.com's Keith Crocker. Is this the Wait, same this Keith the same... Crocker? I think it is. <laughs> and now he, like, after his Blitzkrieg, he went to like uh, film historian because. Uh, so I looked him up actually, and what we didn't find out in that other little thing of him is that he's the heir to the Betty Crocker Empire. Actually, <laughs> but while he loves films and hates to cook, actually, it's been said he makes one hell of a snickerdoodle. <laughs> so, yeah. So there, there's that though. Uh, then partial audio commentary. <laughs> quit halfway I know, through. I, what happens here? Partial with filmmaker Fred Olin Ray. Does he just like stop talking in the middle of it, or do they, or they cut out every other word? He's like, in scene, we blue, purple. Yeah. What? What? what well, I have to know what a partial audio commentary is. <laughs> is it partial audio? The other part miming? I don't know. Is understand. it like five like, minutes it... and ninety five minutes of silence, or is it like yeah. three quarters? I mean, I have to know. Inquiring my, I need to buy this box set just to find this out. Uh, I, we might just for that. Literally, we're going to spend one hundred forty dollars to find out what one line of, of what partial comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then the next one is uh Oh no! Wait, that's still the disc one here. Uh, Blood rights, uh, alternative title sequence, ghastly and depraved interview with marketing whiz. I'm the whiz. I'm Samuel the whiz. Intra- I know that's that's exactly what I thought of. He's like, he's like, buy the box set, one hundred and forty dollars. You won't find anything else, and you'll find out what a partial audio commentary is. Uh, oh. This one, this one is like just, and this is disc one, people. Yeah. Okay, we got like we got eight it. discs left here. <laughs> uh, trailer for Lost Milligan film, depraved. <laughs> the and, exclamation and point. It's got an exclamation point, so we got to really sell it, uh, just like the uh, marketing whiz would do. <laughs> uh, talk of the trade interview with early Milligan actress Natalie Rogers. The Filthy Five, one German language reel of Lost Milligan film. <laughs> Why is everything like partial on this? It's like. <laughs> You're getting one reel of his film. Part- Maybe that's why it's a partial commentary. Cause he only did this reel. Uh, uh, optional English SDH subtitles for the main feature. Runtime. Se- well, it was, this is like the first time ever I think we've included a runtime. Yeah, but it's 72 minutes. It, yeah. Uh, aspect ratio 131 to 1. And it's region free. So we can – everyone in the world can enjoy this. Okay. <laughs> Disc 2. The Body Beneath and Nightbirds. So you get two films on this one. Uh, for The Body Beneath, you get a 2K restoration from the 16mm camera negative and audio commentary with film scholars Vic Pratt and Will Fowler. And I did do my diligence. I know they're not historians, but I think they deserved a little bit of a, a character here. So I looked them up, and apparently they're both still scholars. Uh, <laughs> they used to host a film show, though, on their university public access channel called Fowler and Pratt – how about that? <laughs> so I, I, I've been trying to find like a YouTube of it. I can't find it. It's 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 buried deep in the dark web, apparently. But uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll still keep looking. Uh, there's a trailer on there, an op- op- optional English SDH subtitle for the main feature. Again, this is 82 minutes. <laughs> extended it by 10. Uh, aspect, ra- <laughs> aspect ratio is 133 to 1, and it's region free. Then for Nightbirds, uh, we got a two, new 2K restoration from the 16mm camera negative. Audio commentary with actor Berwick Kaler and film scholar Stephen Thrower. So I looked him up, too, because, of course, you know, all film scholars need to get their, their due. And, and he was once actually a guest on the Fowler and Pratt show. But because of his catchy last name, he was assumed to be a star pitcher but shattered those illusions after posting a 2-16 and record and an 8.74 ERA in his first two seasons of college ball. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they, he, he had an interesting career, so I think he might still be a scholar as well. <laughs> but uh, not, as, not as popular as Pratt and Fowler, obviously. Uh, <laughs> there's a trailer on here. Oh my God, the bridges we've burned tonight. <laughs> uh, optional English SDH subtitles for the main feature. Runtime 77 minutes. Aspect ratio 1.33 to 1. Region free. Disc 3. And this is appropriate. Torture Dungeons and Bloodthirsty Butchers. Are oh, getting better? I feel like that's what people are calling us right now. <laughs> uh, t- Torture Dungeon is a never-before-released director's cut of the film. Well, that's that's cool because, yeah. you know, since we didn't see any of them. But uh, it says brand new res- restoration from the uncensored 60 millimeter camera negative and audio commentary with Milligan historian, historian Alex DeSanto. So, I, of course, I looked him up as well. And since he was just a Milligan historian, he had plenty of free time. 
uh, <laughs> he used to he used that said time to bring treats to all the other historians, earning him the nickname De Santo Claus. <laughs> Man, Cody's gonna kill us after this. I know she, she's. I can feel the rage, <laughs> even though she has not heard this yet. Uh, <laughs> there's also a trailer, uh, the obligatory ob- op- optional English SDH subtitles for the main feature. Runtime eighty minutes, aspect ratio one thirty. I think they have, all have the same aspect ratio. Yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna skip that feature. Uh, region free. Next one is Bloodthirsty Butchers. The brand new restoration from the uncensored 60 millimeter camera negative, a trailer, optional ling- uh, yeah, that, oh, yeah, that yeah. again, the, the 79 minutes ratio, the, okay, <laughs> region free, <laughs> disc four, the curse of the full moon, the rats are coming, the werewolves are here. Is that one title? <laughs> that's one that, title. Yeah, that's two. Okay, I'm The sorry. rats are so coming. The, the werewolves are here. You okay, yeah, yeah, so it seems like a very panicked <laughs> It is a very panicked in, title. Yeah, it's very panic because it's all capitals with exclamation points. Uh, new restorations from the original 60 millimeter camera negatives. There's two versions, Tim, of the original unreleased director's cut, filmed in 1969 as Curse of the Full Moon and the 1972 cinema release. Oh. The World of Andy Milligan. Locations featurette narrated by Temple of Schlocks, Chris Pagliali. Pug- <laughs> Pug- <laughs> Sorry. There was too many Gs in there. <laughs> Trailer. Curse of the Full Moon spe- Oh, yeah, no, there's the specs again. Same old 73 yeah. minutes, 33 to 1. The whole These thing. all have run times and aspect ratios. Believe yeah, it or not. same thing with the rats are coming. The wolves are here! Uh, 92 minutes, so apparently there's a lot of panic. <laughs> um, optional English subtitles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's region free also. Disc 5, Man with Two Heads and Guru the Mad Monk. <laughs> Man with Two Heads. <laughs> Not to be confused with the man with two brains with Steve Martin. Yes, it is not a Steve Martin vehicle. Uh, never before released director's cut of the film. So at least you're getting a lot of like unreleased content here for this disc. Uh, brand new restoration for the uncensored 16 millimeter camera negative party sequence alternate version. The trailer, the uh, the English, uh, the 89 minutes uh, ratio, region free, and the Guru the Mad Monk has. Same thing there, but this is newly restored from a 35 millimeter release print held at the American Genre Film Archive, the AGFA. Ooh. That's pretty cool. And uh, there's two presentations of this film. It's 185 to 1 and 133 to 1 for all you uh, cinephiles there that like to get those things. And there is an audio commentary <laughs> with our good buddy and reluctant chef or baker for Keith Crocker. Then there's Remembering Andy Milligan, in, uh, Milligan uh, interview with set photographer Tom Voza. There's a trailer, the subtitles, uh, f- this is only 56 minutes, uh, it's region free. Disc 6. I know, we're oh still going God, here. Oh my God, we're still going. Right, if everyone wants to take a break, we'll have an intermission. <laughs> it's a mission. Da, 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 da. Okay, we're it's back. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever, the little dancing hot dogs. Yeah, the lobby. I the think, lobby right? Let's yeah, all let's go, all to, the go lobby. to the lobby. That's how big this disc set is. It had its own Civil Gore inspired intermission. <laughs> there we go. And we're at disc six, which is Legacy of Blood, newly restored from a surviving 35 millimeter print supplied by producer Jen Lane. So obviously she had this and it was trapped in her grips or something and it survived. Uh, two versions Legacy of Blood, never before released theatrical cut, and Legacy of Horror, the TV cut. So it must have been released to TV first, mm. I would assume, based off of that uh, thing. Um, Blood or Horror, interview with executive producer Ken Lane. Legacy of Chris, <laughs> interview <laughs> with actor Chris Broderick. I don't know if these were any relation to Matthew Broderick. Uh, TV spot, Legacy of Blood specs, uh, yeah, the usual, but this is 185 to 1. Oh, no, and, sorry, both uh, versions, so... They actually, based on the version of it, it, if it's a theatrical or the TV version, they actually have the right ratio, which is pretty interesting. So that's good. Uh, it's region free. Disc seven, flesh pot on Forty Second Street, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> seeds of sin. These are going oh, downhill wow. fast. It really is. Four K restoration of flesh pot on Forty Second Street, complete by Vinegar Syndrome, and four K restoration of seeds of sin, completed by Vinegar Syndrome, and the. Well, here's an extra thing that wasn't <laughs> announced. 4K restoration of Vapors completed by Vinegar Syndrome. They just threw that in and announced. And, it's like, yeah, it's 32 minutes, so they must have just found it on the cutting room floor <laughs> and threw it in there. Uh, it's got a trailer and uh, English SDH, region free. Disc 8. 
<laughs> I feel like this is longer than eight nights of Hanukkah. It's eight discs of Milligan here. Uh, Carnage and Blood. Two titles there. I guess he, tr- he... After he went from those other crazy titles, he just made well, it After simple, you've come man. up with Flesh Pot on 42nd Street, I don't think there's much places you can go. I mean. Yeah, there's really nowhere to go. Um, <laughs> uh, new restoration of Carnage from the original 35 Miller camera negative and New Master of Blood from a 35 millimeter release print. He's literally taken every form possible, <laughs> it seems like, and they've remastered it. It's hilarious. Toga Party, 1971. This is weird. This is like a whole description of a special feature. So the 70s were tough for William Mishkin motion pictures. The company would often try and reap as much profit from their tepid offerings by making titles available in R, X, and XXX versions. Hot times became hotter. My erotic fantasies while the slasher did the rounds as penetration. Wow. This practice is not unheard of. In the exploitation world, as an effort to squeeze every possible cent off of films, was failed to find an audience first time around. And we actually learned that in that Al Adams documentary. Remember That's they true, were talking yeah. about how the one the director didn't even realize it was his own film because they kept releasing <laughs> it under different names. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I cannot recommend that 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 documentary enough. That is a brilliant documentary. Uh, we're still going here. Uh, it's region free. We have Disc 9, which at least is not a video. It's a CD. They gave you a CD, and it's the Bearded Ladies Wake CD. Electronic music by frequent Milligan collaborator Hal Borsky. <laughs> and you get a bonus book, which is so like every form of medium you get with this, <laughs> this box set. <laughs> Andy Milligan's <laughs> Andy Milligan's Venom. All new 128-page book by Stephen Thrower. It's a circle that, of life. It all comes back around to why Stephen he, Thrower. That's why he had. That's why he was only like a, a Milligan because he was writing this book this whole time. Oh my God! Well, that you is there any doubt why that's pick of the week? Oh my gosh! That this is like this this disc box set will be legendary in the annals of the disc memberment. I yeah. think. Wow. Okay, so let's wow. recap March sixteenth. We had Psycho Gorman, The Invisible Man Appears, and The Invisible Man vs. The Human Fly double feature. I, I should also point out those are being released separately as well. Uh, Castle Freak 2020, Don't Tell a Soul, Tower of Evil from 1972, Dolly Deadly from 2016, another double feature, Blitzkrieg Escape from Stalag 69, paired with The Bloody Ape, and then our pick of the week, Severn Films, Amazing Box Set, The Dungeon of Andy Milligan. All right. Yeah. What a, what a, I might like jaw actually still hurts. Yeah. Like from like, <laughs> that's like the worst nightmare for like the listener too, because like if there's anyone they want to hear, like ramble off like 25 minutes of a dead box set, I know the dulcet tones of Tim would have been their first choice. But... Yeah. This, this is getting to be a lot longer dismemberment than I expected. It was all due to that. It's that one set yeah. did it. It's literally, it's that one set like took like a third of this, this episode so far. All right. So let's, Kick things off on March 23rd. Uh, This is another fairly decent week. Uh, Six releases this week. And the first one up, uh, we're going to skip over our pick of the week and go straight to Warner Brothers Godzilla 4K. This is the 2014 version. An epic rebirth to Toho's iconic Godzilla, the spectacular adventure from Warner Brothers Pictures and Legendary Pictures pits the world's most famous monster against malevolent creatures who, bolstered by humanity's scientific arrogance, threaten our very existence. And uh, this one has an HDR presentation of the film, Dolby Atmos audio track, Monarch Declassified, discover explosive new evidence not contained in the film that unravels the massive cover-up to keep Godzilla's existence a secret, Operation Lucky Dragon, Monarch the Mutophile, the Godzilla revelation, the legendary Godzilla, go behind the scenes with filmmakers and cast for an even deeper look at the larger-than-life monsters in the film, Godzilla Force of Nature, a whole new level of destruction, into the Void, the Halo Jump, and Ancient Enemy, the Mutos. And, you know, this one, I don't know how how these extras compare to the previous releases of this disc, although this is a 4K version, so it might be a nice upgrade. And you're going to get a lot of reissues of these Godzilla titles with uh, Godzilla yeah. vs. Kong coming out. So that's uh, that's that if you are, want to uh, continue uh, upgrading your Godzilla stuff. Yes. And the next one, uh, this is – I don't think this has – this is weird for a Shout Factory release because usually they have a ton more special features on it. This is kind of one of those, like, 
regular Shout Factor releases. Yeah. Like I don't think it's considered their collector's edition, but it's still a great movie. Yeah, and a movie that Kim McKetch has featured recently. Yes, and we, we did um a while ago too. That was our remember that was our first episode we tried to do with no editing. We we got experimental. Yeah, yeah. Mostly because we were running out of time and we had to do it. So we decided to Tim was Tim was so brilliant on the spot, just like he's like, Well, it's a movie called Raw. Let's just do a raw <laughs> footage epi- and we won't edit. So put all the pressure on us, Tim. Uh, anyway, so that's, of course, Raw from 2016 from Shout Factory. Everyone in Justine's family is a vet and a vegetarian. At 16, she's a brilliant and promising student. When she starts at veterinary school, she enters a decadent, merciless, and dangerously seductive world. During the first week of hazing rituals, desperate to fit in whatever the cost, she strays from her family principles. When she eats raw meat for the first time, Justine will soon face the terrible and unexpected consequences of her actions when her true self begins to emerge. That's really tough for a vet school, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should ask our buddy Jackson if uh, if he faced any of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was vet, wondering he, that the whole time when I was he went to vet school. The whole time I was listening to yeah. the Kim and Kett commentary, I was thinking about that. Yeah, we'll have to ask him. But uh, anyway, so this is, I mean, it's still got a nice selection of special features. Uh, it's just, you know, for Shout Factory, you know, you're so used to their big sets now. But uh, so it's got an audio commentary with writer-director Julia Ducournau and film critic Emma Eastwood. Raw, a vulture gout, a discussion with Julia Ducournau and Emma Eastwood. Australian Pinker Introduction and Q&A with Julia Ducarno, I think I've said her name three different ways. I apologize. And Monster Fest director Kier La Janis. Genre Matters, Women Genre Filmmakers panel from Monster Fest 2016. That's actually a great feature I'd love to see. Actually. Yeah, that would be good. And I don't own this disc. I thought I owned it. I didn't, um, actually. So I might. I thought I was going to double dip on this, but I think I'm just going to order this. I, for some reason, I don't know why I thought I had this. I think I got it confused with Revenge because the, the box art, the yellow. Yeah, uh, yeah. And red light, it's the red lettering, I think. For some reason, and we'll start with R. I just thought I had it, but that shows how my monolith has gotten out of control. I don't even know what I have anymore. Uh, Quick Bites with Julia Ducarno and film critic Alexandra Heller Nicholas. You know, we didn't put her on, but she's a film critic, so I think it's. Maybe next time, yeah. We'll give her another Yeah, maybe chance. next time. Yeah. We'll... Deleted scenes, theatrical trailers, TV spots, and Australian promotional video. Nice. All right. So this next one up is looks super creepy. This is from Arrow. This is called The Bloodhound from 2020. A visit to a wealthy and reclusive friend lands a young man in a world of fear and despair. And I don't know what this movie is about, really, but the trailer is really good. It looks like there's one of those just super yeah. creepy, creepy, creepy trailer. I definitely go check this trailer out. Yeah, and it's it's um it's got sleeping bag foo in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's some weird sequence. That's a weird sequence. Yeah, no, it's a sleeping bag. It was he's literally like people like completely engulfed in their sleeping bags and are just fighting each other. It looks very odd. Yeah. I don't know. But kind of fun. But in then a way. again, it it fits in this trailer, so it doesn't seem odd for this trailer. Yeah. It seems odd for life. <laughs> uh, uh, this one does have some extras on it. It has a high definition Blu-ray presentation, optional English subtitles, brand new audio commentary by director Patrick Picard and editor David Squirk. Squirka? Squircha? Is Patrick Picard real? I, I w- or is that just somebody like two fate? <laughs> like he loves uh, Patrick Stewart yeah. and his role as Picard. I know Patrick Picard just seems like too perfect a name. Uh, yeah. Four experimental short films by director Patrick Picard: Bad Dream, <laughs> The Muffled Hammerfall in Action, The Mosaic Code, and Wiggle Worm. On the trail wow. of the, he's got some unique stuff. This guy, yeah. On the trail of the Bloodhound, behind the scenes of a modern chiller, exclusive 45-minute making of featurette, and first pressing only, an illustrated booklet featuring new writing on the film by Anton Patel. Oh, fine. You give me the rapey one. <laughs> yeah, this figures. one's super rapey. Super rapey. Wow. Yeah. And this one is from Code Red. Schoolgirls in Chains, 1983. <laughs> Just by the title alone, you know what you're in oh, for, Oh, my really. God. And it was actually worse than I expected. Yeah, it's worse than you would think. Uh, two deranged brothers who are under the domineering influence of their crazed mother kidnap young girls and keep them captive in chains in their basement, where they subject them to depraved games, in quotes, <laughs> that often end in torture and murder. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a mix of Tourist Trap meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre, starring a lot of bubes. Yeah. This one because... looks... Oh, I don't know about this one. This one looks just... Uh, this one's too, too way too rapey for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's got a 2K restoration of the film, completed in 2017. Uh, audio commentary by actor Gary Kent and writer-producer-director Don Jones. Oh, wasn't he in, like, something else? We talked about Don Jones. Yeah. 
or earlier. No, no. It says audio commentary by writer, pr- producer, director Don Jones and R. A. The Rugged Man. I picture him as the guy from the brawny paper towels. Oh, I I picture him that the or the guy like that the 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 janitor from the Simpsons. You know where he's all like <laughs> muscled. Yeah. You know with the beard. Like that's what I picture him like. <laughs> Uh, audio commentary by writer, producer, director. Okay, we get it. You did a lot. Don Jones, and cinematographer Ronald Victor Garcia, making a featurette uh, and the theatrical trailer. This yeah. is the kind of trailer I don't know how YouTube doesn't slap a eighteen warning. Yeah, on. seriously. Or the fact that like you can't even put. You start typing in horror on Instagram, and they give you a warning that you might need help nowadays. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's but yeah, but like YouTube can show this. I mean, yeah, I mean this is crazy. All right, so uh, next one up is MPI Media Group's reunion from twenty twenty. Yes, that's that Julia Ormond vehicle I just Oh, I yeah, you watched this uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. A pregnant woman returns to her recently deceased grandparents' old family home to spend time with her estranged mother. What begins as a tenuous reunion slowly turns terrifying. And this one looked really cool. I, you watched it, Brian, so how was it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was really good. It was the one I was – I remember I kind of said like a lot of people I saw agreed with me. Like they, the performances were absolutely incredible. It was really – cool uh the way it led up to it and the ending just they kind of added a little couple of things to the ending that kind of made it unnecessarily confusing Mm -hmm. but it was still overall just a really good movie i mean we still we have the screener so um you'd be able to watch it still okay uh i think you'd enjoy it though oh just overall it was a good movie though and you know julia ormond is amazing so and poor Brian gets our pick of the week, which is another packed extras list. Oh my here. god, I do, yeah. don't I? Hold on, I need to, I need to take a sip of my beer, <laughs> which is, is, it's actually it's by Fulton, uh, and it's proper porter, which I always, it's so funny when I saw this, I thought of Ketrin, <laughs> for, you know, you know, of course Ketrin Porter, yeah, Martin, um, it's because it's it's a proper porter, and I think she's she's you know she's quite elegant on her on her. Uh, podcast so my proper porter absolutely adoring lovely wife just brought me coffee so that was very nice a uh, uh, good cup of uh, joe will do you <laughs> good cup of coffee will do us good uh, anyway so my well at least this is this is it's like a long oh my god it's long but it's 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 a lot easier to deal with than 84 discs of uh, Milligan yeah. or Mulligan. Or I've got to get this because I love this movie. Yeah, this this is a good one. Uh, Chow Factory. And then this is a Chow Factory release that we're like. This is a collector's edition. I was kind edition. of referring to early, yeah. And it's Event Horizon from 1997. Uh, when a rescue crew investigates a spaceship that disappeared into a black hole and now has returned, things start to take an increasingly horrific turn. And, of course, uh, we love this uh, movie, and it's great that it's getting a nice Shout Factory upgrade. All right. Are you ready for the, the, the Ooh, special feature? I guess so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Brand new 4K restoration of the film from the original camera negative. New Reflecting on Hell, an interview with director Paul W.S. Anderson. New Ghost Galleon, an interview with writer Philip Eisner. New Organized Chaos, an interview with actress Kathleen Quinlan. New Compassion in Space, an interview with actor Jack Noseworthy. I so wish I didn't know who he was and that he was a film historian rather (laughs) than the actor that I know he is because we would have had really a lot of fun with that. New Doomed Captain, an interview with actor Peter Marinker. New Space Cathedral, an interview with production designer Joseph Bennett. New Something New, (laughs) an interview with set director Crispin Crispian Salas. New, Taking Care of It, an interview with production manager Dusty Simon. Did literally everybody on this entire production get their own special feature? I think so. But they're all new, so. Yeah, they're all new. (laughs) It still continues. New, Taking Care of It, an interview with production manager. Oh, no, I said that one. Dusty Simon. New, Reinforcements, an interview with second unit director Robert Vigian. New, Almost Real, interview with location manager Derek Harrington. New Screams from the Cosmos, an interview with sound designer Campbell Askew. New interview with the every person's aunt and <laughs> uncle from the production. No, sorry. Audio commentary with director Paul S. Paul W. S. Anderson and producer Jeremy Bolt. That's a cool that name, cool. Jeremy Bolt. Yeah. That just sounds like he like he just like comes in lightning fast and leaves. And he's just good with his way. hands. He is. I swear. You know, he just Bolt. The Baking of Event Horizon, a five-part documentary. 
point of no return. A four-part... <laughs> they lost the part. Four-part look at the filming of Event Horizon with narration by Paul W.S. Sanderson. Secrets. Deleted and extended scenes with director's commentary. The unseen Event Horizon. The unfilmed rescue scene. And conceptual art with director's commentary. I like when they put those on there for scenes that were never really filmed. Yeah. But you get, like, a really good... Like, the best way you can possibly illustrate it without, obviously, having the scene filmed kind of like those uh theatrical trailer and video trailer that's worth an upgrade that's worth a double dip i wonder what the video trailer is i guess when it was released on home video maybe yeah i don't know well, it's I don't original know. trailer audio yeah. only. oh so yeah that's a great pick of the week so um yeah let's recap march 23rd we had godzilla 4k raw from 2016 the bloodhound from 2020 schoolgirls in chains from 1983 Reunion from 2020 and our pick of the week, Event Horizon Collector's Edition, Shout Factory, a heck of an upgrade to that disc. So Yeah, I need to get that. I th- I want to see what it is on Amazon because sometimes they get a really good deal on those Shout Factory things. And as much as I love to order direct from Shout Factory, you know, it's like that, that ship the, to get the free shipping. And then sometimes it takes – I feel bad because it takes so long to get. Like what – I mean there was one – what did I – oh, no, it was Vinegar Syndrome because they went on the, the little hiatus. But – I mean, sometimes Shout Factory will take like a month to send your stuff. And it's just like, you know, you almost forget you even ordered it at that point. So I don't know. I don't mean to bash them because I love the company. I just, you know, sometimes I need like, I want to order it. I want to just have it already. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that brings us to our last week in March. This is March 30th. And another, you know, six release week, which is decent. Uh, and we're going to kick things off. We uh, Brian and I did uh, differ on our picks of the week this week, so we'll uh, be highlighting two different films for that. So we're going to start things off with Severn Films' Perdita Durango 4K from 1997. She Yeah, I think that has a, 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 a an English title, too. Yeah, it may, yeah. Um, I, this is what was on the, uh, the cover art, so we just went with it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because I, I did... I'll, I'll look it up while you read it. Okay. Um, uh, she's sexy, shameless, and loves taking people to the limit. She's a dangerous young woman who dreams about a jaguar that licks her naked body and sleeps by her side. Her past is bathed in blood and weird passions. Now she's met the man of her wildest dreams. He's dark, tough, and mysterious. He likes robbing banks, trafficking in corpses, and spicing it all with voodoo rituals. Together, the duo sets off towards Mexico, destined to become the most feared outlaws in the continent. With a pair of teenage hostages, this non-stop murderous road trip will take you on a bullet-riddled ride of sex, violence, and high-octane evil. And uh, this is a this one's pretty graphic. Uh, Rosie Perez stars in Bloods, Bubes, and Bank Robbers, which is yeah. what I got from this trailer. And it's uh, definitely pretty... Uh, Pretty R-rated, I will have to say. Yeah. Oh, it is. Um, so it's called Dance with the Devil. Uh, oh, okay. Is its okay. American title, which I think actually I knew that title. And by the way, it happens – apparently it's on Tubi currently too. So you can check it out uh, without having to purchase it um, if you're wondering about it. Uh, as long as it includes the uh, jaguar licking the naked body, I am all in. I think it does. I think it actually specifies that in Tubi. Okay. Like, <laughs> description, yeah. <laughs> uh, this one has some some great features here. New 4K restoration of the film. On the Border, interview with act director Alex de la Iglesia. Writing, Perdita Durango. Interview with writer Barry Gifford. Dancing with the Devil, an appraisal by film scholar Dr. Rebecca McKendry. And guess what? She does not get a biography because we adore and love Rebecca McKendry. So yes, she, and she is the best, and she is a legend, and so, so she's we, exempted. We, yes, uh, Narco Satanicos, Perdita Durango, and the Matamoros Cult. Interview with Abraham Castillo Flores and Cauldron of Blood author Jim Schutz. Canciones de Amor, Maldito, the music of Perdita Durango. Interview with composer Simon Boswell and shooting Perdita Durango. Interview with director of photography Flavio Blabiano. <laughs> I, don't I don't know why I laughed the way you said it. Uh, oh. So uh, that's actually a decent disc, though. It is, yeah. Severn's been been killing it lately. And speaking of them, they have another one. It's Day of the Beast 4K. That's from 1995. It says a Basque priest finds by means of a cannibalistic study on the Bible that the Antichrist <laughs> is going to be... Yeah, why is... The oh, cannibalistic. <laughs> I thought it's... I'm so used to cannibals being in this... I'm coffee just now. Oh. Sorry. Yes, I misread. By means of 
Kabbalistic study of the Bible that the Antichrist is going to be born on Christmas Day in Madrid. Helped by a heavy metal fan and by the showman of a TV esoteric program, he will try and invoke the devil to find out the place of birth and kill the baby. This has got Joe Bob last driving all over it, I think. Yeah. I, I could totally see this being on I there. could not make hide nor hair tell of this this trailer I had no clue what was going Seriously, on. Seriously, lots of running and shooting and uh, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. Really out of it. Can't tell what's going on. Um but it's got a 4K restoration of the film so you have the best quality to try and figure it out. Um <laughs> Heirs of the Beast, but if you say it like it's spelled it's Heirs of the Beast, get it? I love it. Anyway, Heirs of the Beast, feature-length documentary by Diego Lopez and David Pizarro on the making and cultural impact of Day of the Beast, Antichrist Superstar. <laughs> Okay, that, that's gonna that's gonna be my favorite special feature title ever. <laughs> Antichrist, super, Antichrist, superstar. Okay, uh, interview with director Alex de la Iglesia, the man who saved the world. An interview with actor Armando de Raza. Beauty and the Beast, an interview with actress Maria Gracia Cucinata. Shooting the Beast, interview with director of photography Flavio Martinez Labiano. He's back. Yeah. Oh, it's like a that's like a month of him, yeah. I guess, of this these. This crew. Uh, Marindas Asesinas, 1990 short film by Alex de la Iglesia and trailers. Ooh, okay. Well, at least I get a short one here. Uh, next up yeah. from Shop Factory, The Widow from 2020. In a densely forested area north of St. Petersburg, people have been going missing for three decades. The few corpses ever found were naked. On, I wonder <laughs> if they've been licked by a jaguar. Um, I know they might, I think they were licked. Oh, on October yeah, 14th, totally 2017, a team of volunteers went out into the woods in search of a missing teenager. Soon, all communication with them was lost. Locals believe they were taken by the same dark spirit that took the others. They call it the Limping Widow. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, T- Tim said it the best. It's Blair Meech, Blair Witch meets Blair Witch. It looks very Blair Witchy. But it, yeah, I I, I kind of named it the Blair Widow. But it's like not found footage, but yet there's parts the of found Blair footage Widow. in it, and it's like literally there's sequences that are uh, so the same as the Blair Witch. It's like ridiculous. It's like they didn't even try. Now there was some like cave sequences that looked kind of like Descenti. Like that's the true. There was yeah. that. But it looks yeah. There was that. Yeah. And there was that creepy sequence where they uncovered like a face in the ground, which was kind of cool. Yeah. But. So I don't know about uh, yeah. this one, but uh, no no special features on that one. So well, the next one is supposedly my thing. Now I have to be honest. I accidentally I was going on a on a trying to quickly view all these trailers before we recorded. So I didn't notice that uh, the next one is my guess. But even watching the trailer, I have absolutely no goddamn clue <laughs> what the hell this movie is about. <laughs> So I still have a guess. I I don't even have a guess. That I think it's confused me more that I saw the trailer. I literally am s- stumped. Well, I had to pick this one for your for your guess because the synopsis was so insane. I mean, I try to pick ones that you'll never guess, which is yeah. well, there, which is and not like hard. I said, I literally watched the trailer and it's got me like I think I would have had a guess if I didn't see the trailer. But after seeing the trailer, I don't even think I saw a jungle in it. So I don't even know what the heck's going on. All right, so I'll read you the, the synopsis. I'll let you off the hook here. In 1990, okay. exploitation auteur James Bryan pulled out his video camera and made a decapitation-fueled horror movie about a jungle hotel haunted by kill-crazy ghosts in loincloths. <laughs> The, oh, the te- I didn't see that at all. <laughs> the, the team at Bleeding Skull found it 26 years later and finished it. So hmm. is this, was this actually, like, was this, I guess this, uh, I'm guessing this actually really was. I mean, this is not like them trying to go back and make, pretend that it was made in 1990. Because down here in the extras, there's corroborating evidence that this was indeed 1990s footage that they finished. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I. Like I didn't get anything. I could not figure out what was going on with that. <laughs> I don't know. And it's got like a ton of special features on this thing too. Yeah, read through our special features here. So we got uh, we got Jungle Trap. It says transfer from the original three quarter master tapes. Jungle Trap commentary track with director James Bryan, star Heidi Ahn, and the Bleeding Skull team. It wasn't my fault. The making of Jungle Trap. <laughs> <laughs> they were already putting blame on people. It's like, no, no, you made it. No, 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 I made it. Okay. Jungle Trap Outtakes. HorrorCon 1989. Surviving footage from James Bryan's unfinished horror movie. Scanned in 2K from the 35mm camera negative. 
Bonus movie, Run Coyote Run from 1987, transferred from the original three-quarter inch master tape. So this guy shot on video. I definitely got, I got that yeah. from yeah, the I trailer that. that it was not not the highest quality of, of filming. And it's got reversible cover artwork. Wow. Okay. All right. That brings us to my pick of the week, Vinegar Syndrome's Frightmare from 1983. Drama students decide to pay tribute to their favorite horror star by stealing his body from his crypt for a farewell party. They fail to realize that their violation of the tomb has triggered powerful black magic and Conrad hasn't taken his final bows yet. Is it Conrad Bain from Different Strokes? <laughs> I have no idea, but I, I don't know what this is all about, so your guess is as good as mine. Uh, this one does have some cool extras. It's got scanned and restored in 2K from its 35mm original camera negative. It's a region-free Blu-ray. Commentary tracked by The Hysteria oh. Continues. I'm shaking my fist. You know, I know. Uh, Actually, wasn't this on Shutter or Prime or something? I remember like seeing the the like the poster. Well, there's several frightmares. That's the problem. Oh, so, you're right. Yeah, there yeah. are several frightmares. Um, I know the one you're talking about. Though I don't think this is a oh, okay. that one. Uh, new video interview with cinematographer Joel King. Archival audio interview with director Norman Thaddeus Vane. Historical <laughs> commentary track with David Delval. Oh. and David Decoteau. So, you know, we know David DeVal. Yeah. Okay, we, we, we've met him, so to speak. He looks and sounds like Frankie Avalon. And actually, if you watch Arrow's uh, streaming service, he's on there a lot. Oh, no, no, sorry. It's the Full Moon one he's on, right? Where yes. He hosts yeah, that Full Moon, show. yeah. Yeah, so you can get you get a real taste of David DeVal and see how off we are. But uh, used to do the me- beach exploitation movies in the night in the – well, actually, we're not that off, actually. We're kind of close to some of the – aspects of him like the like he still has shatner hair and wears deep v-necks i think he might actually do that uh to let the hasselhoff like chest hair hang out i didn't study that long enough to see if we were accurate on that one (laughs) but he's still living his best beach blanket bingo life smooth with the ladies like richard dawson from family feud now david de coteau He's actually, he was paired together with David Duvall because, frankly, the folks at Vinegar Syndrome accidentally called him first because he was next in the Rolodex. So to avoid embarrassment, they just went with them both on this commentary. <laughs> nice. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this has an original theatrical trailer and reversible The Horror Star cover art. And I don't know why yes. I picked that one. The reason, the only reason, this was a process of elimination pick of the week because the Perdita Durango was just too crazy for me. The Day of the Beast, I had no clue what was going on. The Widow was just seemed too Blair Witchy. Jungle Trap yeah. was just complete insanity. And then Brian's Pick of the Week, while I liked, I did think it was a pretty cool trailer. This one, the 1983, I just had to kind of go with the more the more comfort level. You know, the more comfort food yeah. type movie. So that's why I picked Frightmare. Yeah, the one I picked, uh, is, as Tim mentioned, is Nosferatu in Venice uh, from 1988. And it's because it's a Klaus Kinski vehicle, and I like to say Klaus Kinski. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, Professor Paris Catalano visits Venice to investigate the last known appearance of the famous vampire Nosferatu during the Carnival of 1786. And as Tim says, it's it's nicknamed Nosferatu boobs. <laughs> I was trying to say <laughs> Nosferatu boobs. Nosfer- Nosferatu boobs. Yeah, because there there's a lot of quite a lot of bubes in this trailer as you what i really think like like it seems like we're getting a lot of bub trailers lately i don't know it's, the, this year 2021 has been the year of the bube so far it's been a very bube heavy and and disturbingly yeah. rapey and tortury uh, yeah know, really have been i don't know there's been a lot of uh questionable releases here this yeah it should really be called like you bube <laughs> instead of youtube yeah because lately i don't yeah. know uh it's got a new 2k restoration of the film it says new creation is violent a feature length documentary on klaus kinski's final years i mean that should have just bumped it up for you right away too. i you know, I, I didn't know even read i didn't re- read the features and i'll probably they probably would yeah. yeah see now you're missing out on a feature length documentary on klaus kinski all i know final is year. i hope they don't so, track your youtube history because i I've looked up so many like naked girls in chains with Nazis and Jaguars licking them. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. There's, been, there's yeah. My, my browser history. Yeah. Is bad right now. Well, I, it's with, I'm right there with you. So at least they're probably linking us on whatever list we're on. To, we'll be on it together. <laughs> so yeah. at least there's that Tim. Yeah. So whatever like weird, like rehabilitation facility they, they request us go to, yeah. we'll be there together. We'll be roommates and we'll, you know, yeah. well, we'll live it up. We'll, you know, we'll have all these movies and yeah. <laughs> pick of the week. So, you know, uh, I'll bring my travel monolith case. We'll be good. We'll be good. Uh, and it comes with the, I think I said our original trailer. So that's, 
that's the my pick of the week. I, I picked this, the Nosferatu in Venice. All right. So to recap, the week of March 30th, we have Perdita Durango 4K, also known as, what is it? Dancing with the Devil? Yes, Dance with the Devil. Dance yeah. with the Devil. Uh, Day of the Beast 4K, The Widow from 2020, uh, Jungle Trap from 2016, made from a film apparently made in 1990. And my yeah. pick of the week, Frightmare from 1983, not to be confused with the other five Frightmares out there, all produced around the same time. Yeah. And Brian's pick of the week, Nosferatu in Venice, also known as Vampire in Venice, uh, for you AKA fans mm. out there, from 1988, the Klaus Kinski vehicle. So that is our roundup for March 30th. Uh, even though a short month, I think these these definitely fostered some great uh, some great discussion, Brian. <laughs> Yes, and Cody is probably going to have hours of work yeah. to try and transcribe that just that one disc set with all those film. Yeah, we may have to just send her a list of the uh, names so she can be able to look out for them or something. Yeah, yeah we got. We got maybe we'll give her, give her, give her like some some tips. Yeah. yeah, we'll just say okay. Here's the people <laughs> yeah. that are uh, that you need to figure out. All right, guys. So we will see you back here next month for our April dismemberment. This year is just kind of flying by already. I know. Can you believe we're literally this was that was our third dismemberment wow, already? Crazy, yeah. That is. But these nuts. are always a lot of fun to do. These are my, some of my favorite episodes to do. Are, are definitely. The oh yeah, they are. It, it's it's it, it was so great when we made that decision to make it its own. All right, guys. So we will see you back here. Take care and keep sending in your listener questions and your uh, emails. We love hearing from you guys. Yes. See you later. <laughs>